This video is not intended for children, but rather for 20-something nerds that take cartoons way too seriously and overanalyze everything. If you're younger than 13 years old, you're not supposed to be on YouTube. Well, let's try something new to get me out of writer's block. So today we talk about Mau Mau, Heroes of Pure Heart. So, Mau Mau. It kinda of feels like this one went under a lot of people's radar, which is quite a shame cause I adore the show. What is this about? Well, it's about Mau Mau, a warrior on the quest to become a legendary hero. His mechanic sidekick Badger Clops and the adorable little Adorobat, who adores Mau Mau and wants to be just like him. Due to a chain of events, these three become the sheriffs of Pure Heart Valley and have to enforce the law and fight a group of incompetent sky pirates and a variety of monsters to keep the citizens safe. It is a pretty good action comedy show with a very funny dynamic between its main characters and a rather hilarious supporting cast. One thing that this this show does surprisingly well, however, is the exploration of the psyche of its main characters. While Mao Mao's enormous ego tends to be mostly played for laughs, it also shows us that behind all that boasts is a giant inferiority complex caused by parental neglect, and the show doesn't sugarcoat how serious this issue is. Mao Mao even goes to a therapist. The episode I want to talk about today is called Adoradan, and as you can probably already guess from the title, this episode is where we get to meet Adorabat's father, Eugene. Up to this episode, the show sort of avoids the topic of Adorabat's family, as she usually just hangs out at the sheriff's office alongside Mau Mau and Badgerclops. So far, the only thing we knew about Adorabat's life outside the sheriff's office was that she indeed goes to school. Her family never came up before, and now we learn why. Eugene came to Mau Mau because he thinks his doctor is missing, and that he he didn't notice up to this point because he worked a lot overtime and thought she just was at her banjo lessons. Adorabat, meanwhile, tries to sneak out but is ultimately caught. What? <laughs> Hi, Dad! <laughs> oh, so now we're all doing it. What, what's going on here? Have you been here this entire time with these strangers? <laughs> Adorabat? I thought you were a ward of the state! <laughs> I thought you were my conscience. As you can see, even Momo forked up to this point that she is an orphan. So as it turns out, Eugene was unaware that his doctor was helping in the sheriff's office and is not exactly pleased that Momo and Badger Clops put her into dangerous situations. I can assure you we would never put our littlest deputy in harm's way. Yeah, why well, just this morning we used her as bait to lure a giant monster out of his little... <laughs> no, Badger Clops, you kidder. Uh, uh, no, what are you doing? You, you people are criminals. I am calling the authorities. Uh, Sheriff's Department, state your problem. Yeah, by the way, I wouldn't try going over our heads, just the system is whack. Half I mentioned that this show is, like, really, really funny? Anyway, I think we all are familiar with the plot. The overprotective parent of a character shows up, who is upset to learn that their child puts himself into danger all the time, and the child character proves them by the end that they can't handle it. Not exactly reinventing the wheel here, and like many episodes, of course, the as of doesn't quite work because of its content. Yeah, it's great that the parent accepts the child for who they are and respect what they want to do, but letting a child go into mortal danger on a daily basis because they can handle it is not exactly a good lesson either. I mean, realistically speaking, we should all side with the parents here. And I would say that this episode could have focused a bit more on the aspects that Eugene neglected his doctor big time because of his work and didn't even notice that she was missing for months. Whereas the episode at least delivers a rather interesting explanation. Eugene is a single parent and obviously completely over his head providing for his doctor alone. As we learn in this episode, Adorabat's mother, Sonara, was killed by one of the resident monsters, which is why her dad is so overprotective of his doctor and doesn't want her to fight monsters. After they talk about that, this happens. Oh no! She must have gone back to the caves! Oh! This is all my fault! Uh, Oh, I gotta go save her! Uh, I, I, I can't lose her too! Dad? Um, I think someone broke into our house and ate all of our junk food! Dad? Personally, I kinda like the twist that the Dorobat didn't just run away. It's a rather good punchline to lighten up the mood after we just run through some heavy stuff, and yet it also shows how much Eugene cares about his doctor as he immediately heads toward danger and gives a really good setup for a Dorobat to prove herself to him by saving Eugene from the monster that killed her mother, which she by the way recognizes. Lots 
smaller than I remember. So not only was Nara killed by that monster, Adorobat saw the whole thing. No wonder she is a bit messed up. Well, okay, it does the cartoon thing where they never actually say that she is dead and we don't see how she dies, but the implication here is really strong since they gave all the puzzle pieces to figure out how it happened and even show the monsters that did it. And while we don't see her body, the fact that her glass is still there also makes it seem unlikely that she made it out alive. If they were to walk back on that and show that she has been alive the entire time, this would be quite a betrayal and contrived writing. Though to be fair, from what we see from Zanara, she seems to be a relevant character. As we learned from this episode, Adorable takes a lot after her mother, who was seemingly a daring adventurer herself. So even if we were to bring her back in some fashion, I wouldn't write the show off immediately because she seems like she could carry an episode. But I rather would like to see her in a flashback episode where Eugene tells Adorabat about her adventures. In either case, another thing I like about this episode is that it shows how much Adorabat has grown over the season. She wasn't exactly a big help in earlier episodes and several episodes dealt with the fact that she felt useless or didn't recognize her own strengths. Here however, she puts no punches. Showing how capable she has become over time, making use of her flying skills and her supersonic attack. I see stuff like that every day! So for the matter, the audience sees that she isn't just the small kid from the first episode who wants to be a hero. She grew into a capable fighter, making it a rather satisfying payoff to her character arc so far, and the fact that she manages to avenge her mother here is the cherry on top. Besides that, this episode also shows how important she has become to the team, as Malma and Badger Clops are devastated after her dad took her home. Which is also rather hilarious, by the way. Dude, you can't spend your whole life eating ice cream just because the doorbat's gone forever! Uh, five more minutes. Do you think the monsters attacking the city are gonna wait? Is that a peanut butter in it? <laughs> <laughs> we should really go. You're right. I can keep it together. <laughs> And they immediately rush to her help when they hear her screech and fight with her in unity. She is no longer that kid that just kinda hangs around them, she is a part of the team, which I think is also rather noteworthy. Now after all is said and done, Eugene is okay with her being a sheriff as he sees too much of her mother in her and knows that it would be wrong to constrain her. Also... Uh, uh, oh, uh, Adora bad? Yeah? <laughs> mess him up good, okay? <laughs> okay, daddy. I'll mess him up. I'll mess them up real good. <laughs> so good, their mommies and daddies won't be able to recognize them when I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> she scares me. Now, I already explained earlier that it is of course wrong to have children fighting monsters, but hey, it's a cartoon and I think the important lesson to take away here is that it is important for children and their parents to see eye to eye and understand the other. It certainly brought Adorabat and Eugene closer together. And with that being said, let's wrap things up. So, Adorabat was a pretty great episode. It did a pretty decent job of pulling the heartstrings and it didn't really pull any punches while dealing with a dark topic even if they didn't explicitly say it. The episode showed us that Adorabat's mom died, and even showed us how it happened. And hey, that takes some guts. And even though the episode was kinda heavy, it still manages to deliver some of Momo's trademark humor. But what about you? Did you like this episode? Anything that bothered you? Do you want me to do more videos on Mau Mau? Let me know in the comments below. I am Tricky Fox. Stay foxy. Sly as a fox, you got me under your spell. But you know I'll never tell That I know you know so well Some